This is our presentation on the rape of Nanking, a horrific event that happened between China and Japan. China and Japan had been at war since the summer of 1937. Before the attack on Nanking, the Japanese claimed victory after defeating the Chinese in Shanghai. With that in mind, the Japanese army marched into China to the city of Nanking in December of 1937 and murdered thousands of Chinese civilians. The rape of Nanking was a very violent battle. It was a genocide. Right after the bombing of the Pearl Harbor, the Japanese saw it was a good time to expand their power. Although the Chinese army was bigger, it was not stronger than the Japanese army. The Chinese military quickly surrendered. Shortly after the massacre began, things went downhill, leaving the town of Nanking destroyed. The relationship between the Chinese and Japanese date back to ancient times. Overall, they share a lot of cultures and religions. However, they have a lot of negative relations, including pre- and post-war relations, and China saw Japan as being under American control. China also saw Japan as supporting the American army against them during the Korean conflict, which created tension. I believe there will always be bad blood between the two countries because of the past experiences and negative feelings associated with them. The Nanjing War Crimes Tribunal was founded in 1946 by the government of Chiang Kai-shek to judge four Japanese Imperial Army officers accused of the crimes committed during the Second Sino-Japanese War. Prior to the Japanese's control, Nanking started as a safe zone, but that changed quickly. After it got taken over, there was nowhere for citizens to hide. A group of Americans and Europeans with professions ranging from doctors to business owners created a zone to help as many people as they could. Despite America's lack of interest in Asia, about 20 Americans and Europeans created an international safety zone on November 22, 1937 in order to aid Chinese citizens. An area of two and a half square miles was closed off from the Japanese for Chinese refugees. They worked towards the prevention of Chinese men being executed and women falling victims to rape, as well as communicating with city officials to get the word out about the safety zone through the newspaper. Some of the people who stayed behind to help out Chinese citizens, despite their own countries requesting they leave immediately, were doctors, missionaries, and teachers. They were inspired by the actions of Jesuit Father Robert and the help he contributed in Shanghai of 1937. Overall, they attempted to use their privilege in order to create a safe haven for the refugees as best as they could. Because America was so focused on Europe and the growing rise of Hitler at the time, when articles showed up in the New York Times, they were met with suspicions and many Americans failed to believe it. The stories coming from Nanking telling of witnesses' reports and the stories of survivors were too horrific and fantastical for American citizens to easily believe. The New York Times helped to give Chinese survivors and the Americans who helped, day and night, a voice to speak out about the tragedy and massacre. So, exactly why did the rape of Nanking occur? During the Sino-Japanese Wars, the Japanese forces wanted to break the Chinese, so they destroyed the city of Nanking in the most violent way that they could. They ra raped women and also girls of all ages, as well as killing thousands. Although nothing could truly repair or fix what happened, Matsue was brought to justice and executed for his war crimes.
How did the events at Nanking affect China today? While Nanking was destroyed and ruined, it took years for both the Chinese people and the city to recover. It has caused the relationship between China and Japan to remain rocky, even today. However, China is now an economic powerhouse.